I had a great time with them and I didn't think I was that much of a sci-fi reader, but um, apparently I am. It's just... loves and thank you for joining me it's Kirsten and today we are doing March's wrap up in the smash or pass style so very simple I just go through all the books that I've read and say whether I would smash or pass I don't tend to do star ratings because I personally don't find them that helpful let's just get straight into it I hope your reading month went well in March and um, we're gonna get into my reading month which honestly had the shakiest start to a reading month I have ever had we're gonna get into the DNFs first which are always passes except for one exception yeah apart from one exception but we're gonna get into the two DNFs that I own physically the first one is more do by Alex Phoebe this was one that I picked up for my reset video so my reset videos I allow myself to go book shopping for one book to read in the upcoming month and Mordu was the one that I chose for March. I went into this thinking it was going to be a really dark gritty fantasy start of a new series that I was really going to enjoy and sink my teeth into and it does have the dark gritty setting that I really wanted. However the magic system is very confusing. There's a glossary at the back which honestly confused you more. I didn't find it helpful. There's also moments where the writing in this book does not gel. Like it doesn't work. There are characters chores of certain characters that are just so ridiculous it doesn't fit it's almost like this author tried doing a sort of Alice in Wonderland type effect to this book where it feels like you're dreaming so things don't have to make sense because you're in a dream which would have made sense if it was like that the whole way through but it's not it's only at certain points and it just didn't really make sense and it was a bit of a shame because I really did like the world building in this like I thought the world the setup for it the fact that we've got this city that's surrounded by this wall that is it's like a seawall so the closer you are to the seawall the more damp and dirty and things are which is where our main character is from and the setting of those slums was done really well like you could really feel how squelchy and just horrible everything was and then you have this person that's kind of set himself up like almost like a god in this city where he kind of rules over everything and he takes on poor boys to become apprentices to be able to give money to their family if they want to like it was an interesting setup for the world I just did not enjoy the descriptions of characters in here I found our main character himself really boring uh, he didn't really have much of his own personality and I just knew the ridiculousness was going to pick up especially because we have a talking dog which I would have found fun and endearing except the way it's written like I flicked through a few pages and I was like this just isn't done well it just didn't work and I couldn't get on with it so unfortunately that was a DNF and a pass um, I did get far into it I feel like I got a good 200 odd pages into this book and I was really considering pushing through because of the fact that I did like the world building however I knew I wouldn't carry on with the series and I wasn't loving it I was just reading it just because and so in the end I decided gonna leave it as a DNF so that was the start of March not the best start especially when that was followed with another DNF which is The Professor by Charlotte Bronte and this is really upsetting because I do like Charlotte Bronte like I love Jane Eyre but this book just wasn't it for me it started out okay it started out interesting it's a bit of a slower start I don't mind that though because it's a classic book and I was in the mood for that we're following this character William who is estranged from his family and um, he ends up trying to work for his brother it doesn't really work out they have a bit of a falling out as well and he ends up in Brussels teaching English however it then gets a bit weird where he starts getting a bit obsessed with watching these girls in this garden that his room window would look onto if it wasn't all boarded up and he becomes a little bit obsessed with that which I just found a bit weird again I can normally get past things like that it was a little bit weird the thing that kind of stopped me from being able to enjoy this though is just the sheer amount of French in this book don't get me wrong I can normally get on with a sentence or two in French like I have enough of an understanding of French to be able to do a sentence or two however there were whole paragraphs in here where it was French and it's understandable because of where he is and the fact that he's teaching English and you know a lot of the conversations are then going to be in French and and I get that but I just wasn't expecting it to then have no translation in this book and that was the bit that really slowed me down is because I wasn't in the mood to constantly go back onto Google and find translations I just wanted 
wanted to have a translation, even if it was at the back that I could have flicked to, this edition just didn't have it. And so as much as I do want to read the story, it's not going to be from this edition. I think I'm going to unhaul this edition because there is no translation of the French in here. And I would have to be in the mood to be able to translate it for myself. And I just wasn't in that mood. And it's not like I would have missed out on like little things here and there. Like it was whole passages and paragraphs in French so I really would have missed out on a lot of the book so yeah this ended up being another DNF unfortunately uh, it wasn't the best start unfortunately so this one as much as I do DNFs are passes like this is a pass I will probably be in the mood to attempt this book again but not for a long time and I would have to find a different edition of this book so and then the other DNF I actually have most of my books were either ebooks or library books this month so I don't have many of the copies to show you but one DNF was The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland this was a book I got out from my library and the only reason why it became a DNF is because I just didn't have time for this book like I took it out of the library because I was very excited when I saw it it was a new release I was really interested in Crystal Sutherland did House of Hollow and I really enjoyed that book in YA horror really well done really enjoyed it this one does not have the same feel that House of Hollow had we were following three main characters and all these girls are linked to witchcraft in some way and you're finding out the way and I do like the way that the demons were done I liked the way the witchcraft was done like I found that really interesting you also have this serial killer on the loose that is going around killing off witches and it is very interesting but I wasn't fully gripped and I then did think to myself you know what I would rather prioritize my TBR so this is one that I can get back to I know it's at my library I will eventually get around to reading this one so it's a DNF for now mainly because I didn't have time for it but I do think if you like young adult book and you like a book where we have a bit of feminism in there and you've got these three girls that are banding together to overcome something together like they're learning they're growing with one another they've got to overcome something they're trying to look into the murders that are happening like if you like that type of thing then I would say give this one a try but it's not as good as House of Hollow which was a bit of a shame this is one I will eventually get back to but it's on no priority so it's still a pass for now because it wasn't gripping enough for me to want to continue on with it like straight away I, I put it down for a little bit with the intention to pick it up at the end of the following week and the intention just then wasn't there like I was fine that I'd put it down and I didn't feel the need to go back and read it okay so that's all the dnfs for the month so let's just go into all the books I don't physically own so we have my sci-fi reading week which I had a lot of fun with I read three sci-fi books for that we have a long way to a small angry planet and that's by Becky Chambers and this was from my library I really enjoyed this one so I did a cozy sci-fi reading vlog I had all the recommendations from Morgan so thank you so much Morgan it was on my discord so if you ever have any ideas for videos you'd like to see me to do and stuff feel free to join us over there it will be linked in the description for you if I've forgotten or the link's not working because it is time sensitive sensitive then let me know and I'll give you a fresh link. So I went into this book and I knew straight away that I was going to really like the characters. There are some parts of the science in this because we're on this ship that's called the Wayfarer that drills tunnels into space to make it quicker for you to get from one end of space to the other end and it's really interesting but the science behind it kind of went over my head a little bit I'm not gonna lie but it was really fun and the character development was really really good you end up with all the different perspectives of everyone on the ship I just really enjoyed it it was really good fun I have been told that the second book follows different characters but it is kind of linked because they're characters that you meet in the first book. I just loved it. It was a really good series, like series. It was a really good book. I really want to continue on with the series. It gave me that cozy feel because I think of the found family and there were some stakes but nothing felt incredibly high. Like it just seemed to work. It was a really fun time. So yeah, I, I was really, really pleased with this book. And honestly, all of the sci-fi books I ended up really enjoying. We had Starter Villain, John Scalzi. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced that each time, but this was hilarious. Areas. And this one I would say if you have never read any sci-fi before, you're not really interested in any science stuff, then read this one. This one was the lightest of the sci-fi. It's about this main character called Charlie whose uncle dies. He then finds out that his uncle was this super villain and he gets involved with everything that's going on. You have a talking cat and the science side of things is more experimenting with animals to be able to have talking cats and things. But you don't really see much into the science of it all. This was a really fun, endearing book. Charlie as a main character was just 
brilliant like I loved him so much so yeah I, I just found this one really really funny and Charlie made it really cozy and it was it was just really good I really enjoyed it it was a fun time and I would really recommend especially if you feel like science fiction really isn't for you I wouldn't say this feels too sci-fi for me it just really worked and then the last one I read for that reading vlog is All Systems Red this is the first in the Murderbot Diaries this is by Martha Wells this one started off and I was like oh it's okay I don't think I'm gonna love it and then by the end of the book I was so connected to this AI robot type part human part robot it's meant to be controlled by this overall government thing where they have to do what their owner says so like they're out on loan and the people that have ownership of them for this short amount of time they have to obey regardless of what it is and do hear of some really mistreated murder bots is what murder bot calls himself and you see how he's hacked his own system so that he doesn't have to obey everything but he's still pretending to obey everything so that he can spend his time watching TV. That's all he wants to do is watch all these different TV series. It's so much fun. Like, I don't understand how I got so attached to this robot. It was, it just ended up working really well. And I also really like the questions that it poses about AI. And because they've got their own intelligence, shouldn't we be giving them the same rights that we have? Like, it was very interesting. And All Systems Red and A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet also have that conversation in there about AI and what is correct and where the line is on rights. So that was really interesting but yeah I ended up being so connected to this character that when it finished I just wanted to read more. This is a really like easy series to get into like they're short book and definitely one that I want to continue on with so yeah it, I just ended up being so much more connected than I thought I would. So this reading week was an absolute smash. All three of these books were smashes. I had such good fun with them and I would really recommend if you're wanting to try sci-fi but you want something that's a little bit more cozy or you're not sure where to start then maybe give some of these a try because I had a great time with them and I didn't think I was that much of a sci-fi reader but um, apparently I am. Okay so moving on from that we have one book that ended up being a new all-time favourite which is Last Tower of the Flower Bride by Rushdie Shockney. I loved this one and thank god I enjoyed it because I read this one at the end of the first week of March. It was so needed because I'd already had two DNFs, I wasn't enjoying the books that I was picking up and I was like I just need something that works and this book did. It was fantastic, it was everything I could have asked for. It's a slow moving book and we're following a main character whose name we never know, they're just referred to as the husband and he is narrating how he met his wife and the fact that his wife is like we can marry as long as you don't delve into my past like you have to make this promise so he makes a promise and then he details their life the fact that it's one that's woven in with tales of mythology and folklore and it was just beautiful it's mirandering it's got no real point to things but it just really worked for me i loved the incorporation of mythology and folklore and it does incorporate both which i thought was really well done it felt really eerie and really beautiful the writing was decadent and and it just felt like a gothic ode to everything I liked. It did feel like this was a book for me. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. I'm really pleased that I picked it up on Kindle when it was on sale for 99 pence. It was a book that when it first got published, I was like, oh, I'm probably gonna like this. I'm not gonna worry about picking it up yet though. It'll be fine, I can get to it eventually. And I'm so pleased that I did end up with a Kindle edition because, ah. Uh, man I needed that book I needed that book after the week I was having this was everything I needed and as I said it has made it onto my top books ever because it just incorporates two things that I really like and does it really well and wraps it in this beautiful package of immaculate prose so for me this was just beautiful absolutely beautiful so a complete smash and then the last book that I read that I don't physically own is everyone in my family has killed someone and this is by Benjamin Stevenson and this was so much fun so this is a cozy murder mystery and it was a fantastic time it's done 
a little bit differently as well because we have the timeline of what's happening right now which is we have got our main character they're looking back on what's happened and it's this kind of like murder mystery that's happening on this secluded spot it's not something they can't get away from they can they've just gone to some mountains in Australia that's like a skiing lodge thing loads of snow comes down so it has the feel of that secluded place like nobody can get away from they can they just choose not to and you've got this murder mystery going on and they're trying to work out who's behind it what's going on at the same time though you get flashbacks into the past where our narrator is describing how everyone in his family has killed someone and it goes into by person of my father it has a little bit of the story that's going on with the current murders and then tells you how his father ended up killing somebody and he does that for each of his family members it was really good it was really enjoyable i read this one on kindle i definitely want to get a physical book he's got a second book that's i think recently come out that i definitely want to read as well definitely a new cozy murder mr author i just really enjoyed the way this was written the way it really included you as as a reader like within the plot line it was really fun it takes a lot of time to talk to you like the narrator talks to you and it's constantly like oh are you paying attention to this you should be and it's got like 0.5 of a chapter where it does a recap of everything that you should have been paying attention to and it just really worked and somehow I still got misled and didn't guess who was behind it all and I feel like I definitely should have because it even gives you aha but you know, this is like the golden age of mysteries. You've got Agatha Christie and all these people and it's just like, aha, you should pay attention to that. And I'm just like, how? How did I not pay attention to that? It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. I loved all the twists and turns that it took. It just started out as one that I was like, oh, this is okay. This is fine. And by the end of it, I was like, oh no, this is really good. So yeah, I would highly recommend if you're after a cozy murder mystery, this was great. A definite smash. Really enjoyed it and we'll be getting a physical book and like I said, continuing on with this series it was so much fun okay so then we get into the physical books that i've been reading this month and one has been disappointing it was so disappointing because i had such high hopes for this book i had been recommended it a few times told i would really like it i assumed i would really like it because it had all of the trappings that i normally really like and then i just found it really boring really slow and you know what pacing doesn't normally bother me i do enjoy a slow book but this just seemed like it was being dragged out for no reason and that's the will of the many by james isington and i do feel really bad because this got really hyped up like loads of people were really excited about it it's just for me this book does nothing new like this is something I've seen many, many times and it didn't bring anything new to it. I did enjoy the magic system in this. I will give it that. I thought that was really interesting. The way that you have people that can concede their will, so like their energy to those above them and those that have more energy can then use this energy to do other things. So I did really enjoy that part of the book. I liked the concept of how this government was basically conquering things, how they were annihilating other ways of life. I did enjoy that, that's a theme that I do tend to like in books. I like the fact that our main character Viz is from one of those conquered nations and they're now infiltrating to try and get into upper society to then go against them in some way. However, Viz is doing this very reluctantly. He's not actually wanting to do any of this. He's just being blackmailed into it and he's been pulled in two different directions as well. We do end up in a college kind of setting university type setting where we have our main character that's attending this prestigious academy that is trying to uncover the secrets within this academy and there is a lot going on and I did like some of those darker elements in this however this kind of felt like it should have been a prequel in a way and we didn't get a lot about the system about things that are going on I'm hoping we get more of that in the second book this is one that I can say I will probably read the second book and if I do not enjoy it more I'm going to DNF the series because this just didn't deliver what I was hoping for there was just something about this that was missing this was the discord book club pick for the month and you know what overall it does seem that most people seem to like this one over on discord there were the same sort of like questions about the world about the society wanting more answers than what we got in this book and the fact that it is really slow like lots of people did agree with that i think for me i couldn't connect to the main character like as we got further in and they started making more connections to their 
other characters in this book, um, started making friendships, questioned a lot of things because it's like how can I make friendships if everything is based on lies? Is it truly a natural friendship? Like I enjoyed those questions in this book but for me I feel like this book could have been about 150 pages shorter and I would have preferred it and yeah maybe just more into the actual system rather than so much focus on this academy thing because it felt like we were getting lots of moments that were fast paced high stakes and then we would stop and go back to lessons and I'm like okay and then it would go let's go fast paced let's have something else happen let's intrigue you and I'm like oh this is really good and then it's like oh no we're gonna go back to lessons I'm like why <laughs> so yeah I just I think for me my expectations were too high. I think if I went into this with lower expectations it would have been absolutely fine but my expectations for this were so high based on what I had heard that it then just couldn't live up to it which isn't the book's fault. I think a lot of people would really enjoy this one. It's just for me I was expecting more than what I got so it ended up being disappointing which then does make it a really big question as to whether this is a smash or pass. I think if the second book really works this then would become a smash and I would be able to reread this and deal with the fact that it's a little bit slower and I can just see it in my mind as a prequel to the events that we're actually waiting for in the second book. However, if it doesn't work, then it will just be a pass because I'm not going to keep the series, I wouldn't reread it. So I'm not sure where this goes. I mean, if I really think about it, coming off the back of a book that I read that was really, really good, that was also a fantasy book, that also has all the things that I should normally like, that really, really worked, and this one didn't, I would say this is a pass. I think I think for now it's a pass, and we're just going to wait on that second book. It's a pass that's on the cusp of being a smash, depending on how the second book goes which isn't that helpful I know but yeah that's just kind of how I feel it was just disappointing and I'm really sad about that so the last three books I think are smashes pretty sure so we have Poison the history of potions and powders and murderous practitioners by Ben Hubbard this one is a non-fiction book about poisons we do have a foreword by Sophie Hanna I don't think the foreword was helpful at all. It was mainly Sophie Hannah going on about the fact that she's wrote murder mystery books and that poison is used sometimes within murder mystery books and that this book is very helpful if you're planning to write a murder mystery book. And I'm just like, what has that got to do with the rest of this book? Nothing really. But the rest of this book I did find interesting. So it's broken down into time frames. We've got periods of history. So from the ancient world to Renaissance to then modern day. And I really liked that. So we had an overview of that time period and how poisons were used and perceived. Then you got a little snippet of a more famous poisoning and then you got information about that poison. So it was really interesting like that. However, I will say I was so much more interested in the poisons from history than from the 20th and 21st century. Those I just wasn't as interested in, mainly because they used in war a lot and you know that's just that's just not as interesting to me like this is a book that I think is really good if you have not read any non-fiction about poisons you're just interested in the topic it's a really good one to give you an idea of what era in history you are most intrigued by to then be able to find more books about that era so that is what I think is really good for this one it's a really good starter book so if you've already had or read books about poisons and you've already got that base knowledge this probably isn't going to be that helpful for you but for me going into it with no knowledge this was really helpful and really fascinating and a lot of the things I found just so interesting but like I say I did lose interest when it got started getting into 20th century and 21st century but it was a good time so for the further in the past history that's a weird sentence I don't think that's structured correctly anyway it's a smash for that a pass for the closer things but that's just my interest level but on the book as a whole it does a really good entry point into poisons and the history of poisons and learning about them and it also goes into like the different effects the side effects the any treatments things like this so it was interesting so for that it's a smash it was really good it took me a while to read I started this in February so it did take me a couple months to read and it's not a long book at all but I purposely slowed down in reading this because I started out reading quite a big chunk of this book in one go and then found I couldn't remember what I had read this was good though I enjoyed it 
weird thing to say about a book on poisons. And then we have the fantasy book which I loved which also made me go actually maybe I didn't like Will of the Many as much and that is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is a book that I didn't expect to really like because I'm not a massive fan of Jay Kristoff's writing from his Nevernight series. And so this book had all the things that I should really like. We have a main character that is telling his story to somebody over the course of a few days. This first book is the first night. He's looking back over his past and telling his story into how he got there. That is something I genuinely really enjoy and this setup with it being about vampires and stuff I was like it's got everything I should like however I'm gonna hold back on some of my expectations because I wasn't a massive fan of Nevernight. And then I read it and I adored this book like look at the annotations. I loved this book so much which then made me go why didn't this one work for me and I think it was just I couldn't get on with the writing, I couldn't get on with the character whereas in this one I loved the writing, I loved the character, I really enjoyed the side characters, I enjoyed seeing all the hardships that we went through, like it was fantastic. So we're following Gabriel and Gabriel is telling his story. He is the last of the Silver Saints who are part vampire, part human and they are fighting out against this war against vampires. It is eternally night now because something's happened to the sun, they don't know what happened, they don't know why it happened. Vampires have been able to take over and Silver Saints were the last remaining kind of force against them and Gabriel's now the last of them. So interesting, it was so well done. So Gabriel's in prison, he's now telling his story to a vampire who is writing it all down and the way it's done it's broken down into different books within this book and the odd books are from when he was a young teenager who found out that he was part vampire who then gets brought into the Brotherhood of the Silver Saints and all the training and all the things that goes alongside it, the enemies that are made, the friendships that are created, like all of that is in the odd books. And then in the even books, it is from three years prior to him being in prison where he is hard done by, he's broken hearted, he's lost his faith, he's just, he is a shadow of what he once was and he's constantly told by people, oh but you're the black lion, you did all these amazing things and he's like, yeah okay calm down, that was a long time ago and so you're hearing about that and I liked that, I liked the fact that every time things started to get a little bit slow you would then change what period in time you're reading from. I like the fact that the way that Gabriel, John, Jean, John? The vampire that's interviewing him would break narrative and they would have little sentences here and there that would interrupt the narrative. I really enjoyed that. I just loved everything about this book and as you can see I did tab it. So my different tabs we have quite a few. We had dark red for quotes that I loved, we've got blue for religion, you've got this pale colour for addiction, you have this green, dark green for like despair, melancholy, just, just moments of heartbreak. And then you've got this purpley colour for moments where it talks about women in society because there's a particular side character in here that is very forward thinking, really pushes out against things, really finds frustration in their situation and I enjoyed that. It was oh, such a good book. It was so so good. I loved this one. I really want to continue on with the series. It was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. So thank you to everyone that voted because this was on my TBR for March between two different books for you to vote between. This is the one that won. It was brilliant. It was a really really good time. So yeah, that was amazing. Smash. And then the last book is another smash and that is Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This was really good as well. This was slightly different to what I expected though. So this is a murder mystery that is set in 1327 and we're following Adzo who was writing down what happened during this time when he was a novice to brother William and brother William is called to this particular abbey one because he's needed to talk and like mediate between different monks different factions within religion that they're all coming to have this discussion about Christ and poverty and all of that but at the same time there is murder mystery that's going on and he's called in to help with that. The only thing I will say about this book is the murder mystery elements in this while very interesting and I did enjoy it's a very 
very small portion of this book. If you were going into it just for the murder mystery part, this book could have been a good 200 pages shorter. However, the discussions in here were really interesting and they're all about religion and different things within religion, different beliefs, the different arguments that can be made, the different way things can be interpreted. And yes, there were slow, dry moments, especially when we're looking back on the history and we're seeing how religion and politics was going and the difficulty that lies in all of that and the way that they really shouldn't mess with one another, like they shouldn't get involved, but obviously they do and the mess that it causes, like it was very interesting. It meant I really wanted to read this slowly. So I actually read these two books over the course of two weeks. Originally, I was gonna do them a book a week and I do think I could have read Empire of the Vampire within one week and been absolutely fine with it. Name of the Rose, if I had tried fitting into one week of reading, I don't think I would have enjoyed anywhere near as much as I did. I liked being able to take a break from this. I liked being able to leave it a day before I went back into it to really think about things. I also took the time to translate some stuff because there's no translations of any like Latin or things that were in this book and um, Umberto Echo does go. My editor did say we should put some translations in here but that's not my problem. Um, so I was taking the time to translate things. Now I don't, like I said with the professor, the reason why I didn't enjoy this one is because I wasn't in the mood to translate all of this and that's because they were like full paragraphs whereas in this one it wasn't. It was more just like the occasional poem and things like that which was a lot easier for me to then translate and you didn't technically need to translate it to know what was going on. I just wanted to. But yeah this was really good, very interesting. I'm glad I took my time with it so that I then didn't become frustrated at the fact that the murder mystery side of this was tiny compared to what I was expecting. But again I did annotate so let's go through. I've got for annotations, well tabs, I should say. We've got light green for quotes that I love, which is a generic one I always do. We've got orange for talks about society, the way devil is perceived in society, the way torture and fear of religion is used rather than love of religion. You then got pink for art and religion, the way that religion can be expressed through art. And then we have this purpley colour which is for the murder mystery part. It was a good book, it was very entertaining. I do wish it had more focus on the murder mystery because you don't get as much of that as I would like and there are some really interesting things. It did end up that I kind of knew who was behind it and as much as I didn't know everything, I'd kind of guessed it, which was fine. I just wished there was more to it, more focus on the mystery and less on the history. At the same time, I did enjoy it and it was very interesting. And I feel like this would be a really interesting book to discuss with people because of all the debates that were in this book and the different, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just debates on theology and where people stood when it comes to religion. And I'm not a religious person, but I did find it interesting. So yeah, that was another smile. So that is it. That is the reading month for the month of March. I did have a good time. I'm really pleased it ended well. Like I say, the start to this month was really rocky, really shaky, and I was very worried. And then it was a bit disappointing to then have a book that I had such high expectations for not quite land the way I wanted it to. It was overall a good month. I, I would say it's a 50-50 split really and it was thanks to the Sci-Fi Reading Week, a couple of other ebooks that I read and then the last two physical books that really knocked it over the edge and made me go, ah, oh, this was good. Because otherwise the other physical books that I read, they just, they just weren't doing it. Like these three and they're chunky books. I mean, apart from The Professor, but just it just didn't work. The start of the month wasn't the best. So let me know, have you read any of these? Do you agree with me on any of these? Or do you want to read any of them? What was your favourite book in the month of March? Or what was your most disappointing? Let me know in the comments below, but I've been talking for ages, so I'm going to stop nattering and I will leave you in peace. So thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, then let's put, let's do a space emoji. Why not? Because I did enjoy that sci-fi reading week. So leave a little space emoji in the comments below if you don't know what you want to comment or you've just made it this far. So thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every single one of you that takes the time to watch these videos, to interact. It's been lovely getting to know you all so thank you so much. If you have enjoyed this video then please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things really help this channel grow. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will always be linked below for you and I will of course catch you in the very next video. Mm -hmm.